you creeps. Okay, tonight's dinner was voted on by my family. This is what won. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Probably not. Because I am missing the main ingredient. A couple pieces of chicken there. Actually, we've got chicken tenderloins, but I bet you the best chicken for this recipe, and really every recipe, are chicken thighs. Do you even know what we're making yet? Probably not, because I haven't said it. Bourbon chicken, everybody. So I was gonna write out the bourbon chicken recipe I found on Pinterest. I'll link it below. It's basically the same as this, or you can just screenshot that. This recipe, someone gave it to us, I wanna say like, 11 years ago, uh, and who knows, maybe his mom is the writer of the blog that I found the recipe on just now. Anyway, it took me a really long time to find it in my recipe book. <laughs> it's always the last place I look. I thought, oh, I'm not gonna write this recipe down from online, I'll just save time, I think I already have. Anyway, short story long, we're gonna make bourbon chicken tonight, this is what you need. Coco aminos or soy sauce, ketchup, garlic, ginger, some apple juice, you guys know I don't have that, I can't even follow my own recipes to a T. I just always use this apple sauce, because I always have some. Brown sugar and then some cornstarch, and of course, the chicken. Oh my gosh, and rice. Let's put some in my Instant Pot right now. So we've got about three cups of rice in here. I always make extra because it's always a good idea to have extra rice on hand. And then for the Instant Pot, you're supposed to add equal parts water. I don't do that. So this four, oh my gosh, making a mess over here. What's new? Four cups of water. I'm gonna go bigger. I'm gonna add about five cups. That seems to be my, our magic number over here. I use my Instant Pot as like a glorified rice maker, and there we are. Okay, this is a super simple meal that you can throw together like on a weeknight. You just need one clove of garlic. <laughs> one clove. <laughs> one GMO large clove of garlic. A quarter teaspoon of ginger, or if you don't like ginger, leave it out, who cares? Oh, I'm running out of ginger. You also need crushed red pepper. I don't add that. I mean, it doesn't add too much heat. I just don't keep that stuff around. A quarter cup of apple juice. This is clearly more than a quarter cup, but I'm not gonna put like half a pouch in the fridge, you know? It doesn't matter. One third cup brown sugar. Two tablespoons of ketchup. A one and a two. One third cup soy sauce. And you know what? I always add a little extra. It doesn't hurt to add, to have a little extra sauce. You know what I mean? No one has ever said with their bourbon chicken, oh, this is too much sauce. You just add rice, am I right? Okay, half a cup of water goes in. And some apple cider vinegar. Forgot to pull that out. I had to go pull this from my laundry room. I'm out of apple cider vinegar, so I'm just gonna add normal white vinegar. <laughs> you let this simmer for 20 minutes. I'm so proud of myself. I don't think I shared it with you. I organized my stuff down here. Aren't you so proud of me? It feels so nice opening this drawer now. It's not a drawer, it's a cabinet. Okay, now we're gonna work on the chicken. And I have shared this little hack with you before, but I thought we could try it again together. Last, my fingers are so weak. My fingers hurt. That I have trouble with this, so we're gonna try it again. Uh, oh, and this is just if you have like tenderloins and you wanna take the the loin out of it, the, what the heck ever this is called, I totally forgot. It's hard to get a good grip on this, but you basically take the white part, the cartilage, what is this? I still don't know. And then, oh, there it is, oh gosh, oh, use, look at this. And then you just pull it, it comes right out. <laughs> no one has to chew on that. It's amazing, look at that. Beautiful piece of meat. Can she do it again? I think fork placement has a lot to do with this. So does the tenderloin go on this side or this side? Oh, okay, there it goes, there it goes. And you just pull it. Oh, it's magic. Every little thing she does is magic. You know what song is stuck in my head? The Greatest Showman. This is the greatest show. Man, it's so slippery. I think we're gonna be Greatest Showman characters for Halloween. Oh my gosh, it's so slippery. It's gonna take me 20 minutes just to work on this. Oh, dropped it again. Come on. Everybody's watching. Woo! <laughs> Guys, it's so fun. Oh my gosh, it's like the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> There's just something so completely satisfying about this. You have to see this from a different angle. Ah, ah, up close and personal. Okay, are you ready? There it is. It's like a little birthday gift.
I'm just gonna throw the chicken in with a little bit of oil. And then we're gonna season it with some really advanced spices. I don't know if you're gonna have these in your cupboard. You might have to run to the store. We've got some salt and we've got some pepper. Can you handle it? I'm just gonna spread it out and let it sit and develop some color. While we head back over here and finish our mise en place. I really like zucchini in strips I have found. So that's how I'm going to cook them. And you can do any vegetable with this. I'm just using what we have because I really like zucchini and I think it's in season. It was on sale. Although, isn't it a winter vegetable? I mean, it's all GMO anyway. To wash your mushroom, you just get a damp uh, paper towel or washcloth or something. And I take the stems off. I, you know, and I should eat them. We should, it's, they're totally fine and edible. However, I'm not a huge fan of mushrooms, but I find that if I take the stems off, I am a lot more likely to eat them. So that's what I do, okay? In your kitchen, you can do what you do. In my kitchen, I make my own rules. Welcome to it. Also, fun fact about mushrooms, since we're right here and I have your attention, it's the only vegetable, I, or one of the only vegetables, or foods, that you can get a natural source of vitamin D. Isn't that exciting? Awesome. Oh wow. Like totally freak me out, I mean right on. Tor, sure, number one. We've got some color happening over here, which means we got some flavor. So the chicken is done. I'm just going to reserve it on this plate. Once the sauce is done, then I'll throw it in with the sauce. Okay, this burner doesn't always catch the pan. Sometimes it turns on, sometimes it doesn't. I have like a magnetic, uh, ooh, bumped it, stove top. I'm just gonna throw the zucchini in and then season it the same exact way. Olive oil, salt and pepper. I let the zucchini cook before I throw the mushrooms in because the mushrooms cook way faster than the zucchini. Once the sauce has reduced a little bit, the recipe says about 20 minutes, you make a cornstarch slurry. So it's equal parts cornstarch and water. For this recipe, it says one tablespoon. I do a little more. Ah, oh, I dumped it. I didn't show you, but I always add a little more. That's like with everything I do. Plus I have a ton of cornstarch from when the cornstarch Play-Doh was a thing. Do you see how thick this is? Maybe I add a little too much. It's the worst Play-Doh I've ever made in my entire life. But this is the sauce all finished and our veggie is still cooking along. And the chicken goes right into the sauce. You can keep it warm in there. This is supposed to be a take on food court bourbon chicken. So take that for what you will. Mmm, delicioso. Okay, the veggie is done. Oh, oh, yes. And if this doesn't look like a steaming pile of deliciousness, I don't know what will. Look at that steam straight off of the stove top. All right, we have some rice that's finished over here. And then our bourbon chicken over here. On the menu tonight is something super simple. I got it from this cookbook. That is what it's supposed to look like. We'll see if ours looks anything like that. I don't have cilantro. I might have cilantro, I'm gonna check. It is white bean chicken chili, and it's from this cookbook, Six Sisters Stuff Healthy Eats. I love it. It is like super simple. You basically, I mean, if you see the ingredients, oh yeah, and the chicken in there, we're just gonna throw this together. And I'm gonna cook the chicken in my Instant Pot I'm not sure it saves any time, but I figure maybe I can cook the chicken and all of this just at the same time. I mean, on the stove top, it literally takes, what, five minutes to heat through? But I have to cook my chicken in the Instant Pot anyway. Well, I mean, technically I don't have to. All right, I don't have to. Okay, I have chicken tenderloins again. Oh gosh, hold up. Because I need to eat through them, but this time I'm not gonna take my time and take that cartilage out or loin. I don't know what it's called. It's, I'm gonna leave it in because who has time for that? And you know what? I would be using my Instant Pot. I Oh, I don't know if I shared with you. I made the executive decision to use my stove top. I, if it was still frozen, I would do my Instant Pot, but since I basically have my life together these days. <laughs> yes, Meredith. I'm just going to throw it on the stove top since it only takes a few minutes to cook up. Another super easy weeknight meal. It's quick, it's fast, it's all the things that you want out of 
dinner. Well, hopefully it's delicious. We don't know about that yet. To be determined. You know what, I'm gonna save this for, I'm gonna cook it and then shred it up. Save it for lunches or whatever. But I didn't tell you and I need to preheat my oven. I'm also going to pair this soup, or I guess it's chili, what? I would call this more of a soup than a chili, just based off of the picture. Anyway, I'm gonna throw this in the oven. They're just a couple of baguettes. I thought about rice, but I'm just gonna do the baguettes. I'm just gonna throw the chicken in with some oil. I'm gonna season it with some salt and pepper, but I have to refill my uh, little container here. All right, perfect. Put your chicken in a really hot pan and it'll brown on the bottom and that's what you want. You want that flavor to come out. Just to keep the chicken moist, a little trick that I do that I'm not sure I've ever shared with you, I just add a little bit of butter to the pan. A little bit, see how much that was? <laughs> butter makes everything taste better, okay? This looks about done. I feel like the Wicked Witch over here. I'm gonna add two cans of white beans. I'll season that in a second. Lord. Two cups of chicken broth, that's about half a carton here. Oh, and an ingredient I forgot to tell you about was cumin. There it is, nice and smoky and delicious. Two teaspoons of that. Guess that's the main flavor of this dish. Also, I was looking through the ingredients of this and this is such a good pantry, like staple recipe because listen, I haven't gone grocery shopping in forever and I thought, oh my gosh, what are we gonna eat tonight? And I had all of these just on hand in my pantry. I planned to make this recipe all, like months and months ago I never got to it, but I had this in my pantry, so that's nice. Two cups of this goes in, and it's an entire jar. Bonus, if you want to get crafty with your kiddos, make something special out of that. Ask me what I'm gonna make, and the answer will be uh, probably nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, salsa verde smells so good. All right, what else do we add? Is that it? Would you believe me if I told you? That is it, a bon appetit. I mean, you're supposed to serve it up with some avocado and cilantro. Oh yeah, cilantro, let me see if I have it. Well, I did not find cilantro in my fridge, but I did find a lime. I might squeeze a little bit of that in there. And I found one of these numbers. Tell me you're not jealous and I'll tell you you're lying. Oh my, whoo, that is delicious. That is like, you know what? I used to have white bean chili all the time. To me though, chili is a little thicker, a little heartier. I feel like just because they put beans in this, they're calling it chili. <laughs> but that is good. I'll tell you what, if you want it a little thicker, I would half the chicken stock and keep in the the juice from the can of beans. You know what I mean? Like not drain one of the juices. I'm gonna throw some of this lime in because why not? I have it and I cannot for the life of me remember what recipe I wanted to make. I've got like four limes in there. It won't hurt, right? Oh, citrus makes everything taste better. And now look at me, I changed the whole recipe. Delicious, you just let that simmer. It says five minutes to heat through. I mean, it's definitely heated through. I'm just gonna let it simmer until my uh, French bread is done and we're done. How easy was that? For real, I feel like I cheated somehow, like I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Dinner is ready in literally in less than five minutes. It's insane. All right, the bread came out of the freezer. I obviously did not set a timer, have we met? But it is actually perfection. So I'm just gonna cut this up and then serve this has been sitting. I mean, it was done 20 minutes ago. Actually, the bread doesn't take that long to cook. Probably as long as it takes to preheat the oven, it was finished. I'm, I'm trying real hard to style this, you guys. It's just not my thing. Anyway, this is what the final product look like, looks like. I'm just gonna dip the bread a little bit. Have a little chef's taste. I would say that is supreme for a five minute meal. Rachel Ray doesn't even do it in five minutes, you know? Ooh, you know what you could do to creamy it up a little bit? Maybe add cream cheese. Mmm, I'm not even a huge fan of cheese, but that sounds delicious. Ooh, look at that shot. That's the money right there. Ayo. You just gotta fail until you succeed, you know? That's what Bobby Bones says. Hold on, I'm back to styling because who doesn't wanna look at a bowl full of carbs? I mean, if that's not the most beautiful thing you've seen all day, I don't know what is. Also, the portion size between this bowl of carbs and this, it's perfect ratio, if you ask me. Okay, well, we're in for a treat. Since dinner did not take that long at all, I'm going to use the rest of the chicken and make a little marinade for tomorrow. I guess we'll just throw it on the grill for lunchtime or the pan or something. So this is grilled Cajun lime chicken. So we're using up some limes, what we have in the fridge. So let's get started on the marinade. 
Okay, two tablespoons of olive oil. Looks about right. A quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. You also need some Cajun seasoning, but I don't have that, so I feel like it'll be fine without it. Some ground cumin, a quarter teaspoon of it. You need the juice of a couple of limes. I always regret not using my juicer, but then I'll, I'd have to wash it, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the limes in there too. Another staple item that we all have, and now I'm wondering, oh, do I have enough? You're supposed to have a, ooh, I wasted a couple splashes. A quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. Look at that. I have almost exactly enough. It's perfect. Now, next time I go to the grocery store, I'm gonna have to remember to get some of this Worcestershire sauce. It gives it like a really rich flavor. Oh, I have cuts on my hands and the lime juice is just seeping into it. It's burning. Okay, now, oh, I guess I should mix it up before we add the chicken. That's not that much marinade, but we don't have that much chicken. Also, you don't need a ton of marinade. That is perfect. I'm gonna keep this in the fridge overnight, but it says you only need to really marinate it for an hour. Every time I open the fridge or every other time I open the fridge, I'm just gonna give it a good shake. These bowls have lids to them, which I love. Perfect. I have to make some rice and I thought this would be satisfying for you guys to watch. Oh my gosh, of course it doesn't fit. So I guess we're gonna make this much rice. So I let this sit overnight. Ooh, look how delicious. It looks terrible. It looks absolutely miserable. Ugh. Let's take it over here. Got our GFG going. Okay, if you don't know, GFG stands for George Foreman Grill. Fun fact, did you know, do you think most people know this, Alex? George Foreman named all of his kids George Foreman. <laughs> That's awesome. And people get on us about Wentworth. Is this thing hot enough? Whatever, I'm just gonna throw, ooh, is that even plugged in? I'm just gonna throw the chicken on there. Knocks out the fat and keeps all the flavor. Oh yeah. It's worth it, it's worth it for the view. Look how beautiful that looks. All right, let's take it off before it dries out. I don't usually go this fancy for lunch. I actually probably never do, but it's dinner inspiration after all. I thought I would plate it up nicely for you and I even went above and beyond. I cut up a lime. This thing smells so good. I'm just going to put it over top. Maybe it'll make it look prettier, I don't know. There's the money shot right there. Call Food Network, maybe their magazine. I need to be a food stylist right here. <laughs> Those are too big. Okay, maybe the lemon or lime was an overkill. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't decided. <laughs> anyway, I have a feeling that this is going to taste really good because it smells really good. So we're gonna dig in. Final thoughts over here. Alex said it was top notch. So uh, I, li I really like the flavors, I enjoyed that. I definitely think it's worth making. Yeah, so you go ahead and eat that for dinner tonight. Why not? It was easy, super simple. All right. Okay, stop music. Oh my gosh, jamming out to some Gavin DeGraw. Man, I love him so much. Okay, another day, another dinner. What's on the menu tonight? Oh, just a bunch of random stuff I found in my fridge. This has actually been on my meal plan for, uh, again, months and months and months. And I have some ham left over. Oh, what are we making? <laughs> All right, let me show you. Well, it's not a real recipe. I wrote it down chicken scratch. It is, oh, I didn't even write down the name of it. Chicken cordon bleu casserole. Let's call it that. That seems like a pretty good name. Oh, and <laughs> I was looking up the recipe for this thinking, you know what? I'm not even sure if I'll be able to compare it to what actual chicken cordon bleu tastes like because I cannot remember the last time I had chicken cordon bleu. Pretty sure my husband may have duped me when we first got together and made it for me, but that was a really, really long time ago. And I don't remember 100%. I try to block out the lies. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I have this pasta back here. Oh my gosh, look how stinking cute this pasta is. This is the only pasta I have in my whole pantry. I'm telling you guys, I'm cooking for real from my shelf as much as I can. So this is not a very heavy, veggie based meal <laughs> if you can't tell this whole week actually has been low on the the veggies uh but you know what we're doing our best look at that little guy that little alligator and then there's a monkey there's all kinds of things giraffes in there and stuff too a friend sent me this pasta and i just love it and i kind of feel bad putting it like using it <laughs> 
if I don't use it now, when will I use it? So this is everything you're gonna need, plus some chicken that I'm just boiling up. I'm cooking it on the stove top, and we're going to start whipping up dinner. All right, what do we need over here? Two and a half cups. We're starting off with some half and half, two and a half cups to be exact, and that's a lot. This recipe, oh, by the way, if you didn't notice, very cheesy. Wait, was that one and a half cups? Oh, Lord, I don't remember. I don't, I, did I do two? Let me see what it looks like. That looks like one and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, whatever's left in this. Oh, look at that, perfect. I'm, gonna, I'm pretty confident that I only did one and a half and it's empty. It's, pro, it's like, hi, this is why I don't measure people. Measuring cups just trip me up. And then you need half a cup of chicken broth. This is chicken stock, it's all the same. I mean, it's not, but kind of. So just heat that up. Okay, while it's heating up, I'm just going to add in two tablespoons of Dijon, some garlic powder. That's not on the recipe, but oh, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, some parsley, you guys know I don't have that. I do have some Italian seasoning, and I just feel like this is extra. My gosh, just that alone smells so good. And then some paprika. Give that a nice mix. Oh, uh, the recipe calls for some onion powder. We don't have that. We need some salt, pepper. It's looking good already. We're also going to add in one block of cream cheese. Woo, my goodness. So eight ounces, let that melt in there. We also add more stuff. Oh, a, an egg. Woo, the chicken. The recipe calls for Swiss cheese. I think that's pretty traditional when it comes to chicken cordon bleu. But, I mean, this is a casserole, so do we have to stick to traditions? No. So I'm going to add two cups of the good old mozzarella, because that's what I had in my freezer, and I took it out. And I don't know if you could refreeze cheese in that way. Was that two cups? That's pretty good. So I'm just trying to use it all up, you know? Mix that in, and here's the kicker. You're supposed to add one beaten egg, and I would be lying if I told you I wasn't scared to do this. Well, there it goes. Didn't turn into uh, scrambled eggs, so that's good news. Ooh, this is actually nice. Oh, crap, there's a topping that you're supposed to put on this. I totally forgot. Oh, my God, let me turn the heat down. Can't stand the heat. Just get all melty. While that melts, I'm going to cut the chicken. Well, things are looking good with the cheese sauce, so I'm just going to add all of the chicken. I just cooked up just a whole package of chicken tenderloins. I'm trying to eat through the tenderloins if you can't tell because I bought them, you know, some time ago and I need to eat them before they go bad. And then two cups, I think. Yeah, two cups, wait, what? Of cubed ham. So just a couple big handfuls there. That looks good. And I'll save the rest for an omelet or something delicious. Oh wait, almost forgot. The pasta. I thought the pot looked a little empty. They also have, ooh, like a low carb. I saw a lot of keto versions of this on Pinterest, but you know, I have kids and I feel like they're much more likely to eat the pasta version. So I'm just gonna mix this all up. Oh yeah, that looks good. I'm not even a huge fan of like cheesy pastas. I have my oven ready to go and I just looked and I do not have any breadcrumbs or panko crumbs or bread. <laughs> I don't have any bread. I'm sure I could probably find some in my freezer, but I don't care that much about making a topping for this. Plus, like, can I call it low carb if I don't make the topping to it? <laughs> that looks like cheesy heaven. I'm sure you could just eat it as is. But we are going to pop it in the oven, 300 degrees, for 30 to 35 minutes. Three, did I say 300 degrees? I meant 350. Who cares? Ooh, ah. Uh, it did not look this yellow when I took it out of the oven, <laughs> but I've just been letting it like cool uh, at room temperature and it's still very hot. So we're gonna dig into this guy and give it a little taste test and see if it is worth making. Okay, let's see if it's got a nice little cheesy, ooey gooey pull to it. Oh, well that was anticlimactic. I thought there would be like cheese hanging all out of it. Well, all right. That's what the inside looks like if you are curious. Oh my word. Okay, I just had a little chef's taste over there. <laughs> you get perks when you're the one cooking the food. Okay, one thing I will mention is I think it would benefit from having cheese over top if you don't have breadcrumbs. And then a second thing I thought of was 
I have crackers. So I could have put crackers over top of them. So if you're gonna do the breadcrumb mixture, I think it's like half a cup of breadcrumbs or even crackers or whatever, smash them up and then like four tablespoons of butter, you mix it up and that's your lovely topping. But since I didn't really have a topping, the pasta got a little hard, just the pasta on the top though. Uh, but yeah, other than that, delicioso. <laughs> it's Brownie Friday, everybody. So tonight for brownies, we're making the best. Actually, I don't know if they're the best. This is all you need apparently, so let's just hop in and then I'll talk your ear off. Okay, so first of all, one and a half cups of Nutella. Actually, the recipe I found says a jar of Nutella. So then I had to go on a wild goose hunt about, well, how big is a jar? Because surely they don't mean this size. So a normal size jar is 13 ounces, which equates to uh, about one and a half cups. Google told me 1.6 something, 1.65 cups or something like that, and I just don't care that much. Oh, by the way, this gold seal, and do any of you remember when they used to allow you to send in the gold seals and then redeem them for Nutella merchandise? Oh, I had Nutella everything, okay? Because you can imagine how many gold seals I had saved up. All right, one and a half cups, that's where we were. So, I have seen this recipe float around for literally years. Years and years and years and years. And one time I made Nutella cookies, which I feel like was the, I think maybe it was just Nutella and eggs or something crazy, I don't know. But I ate them and I declared, this is a waste of Nutella. And I was so mad because I would have rather just eaten a cup and a half Nutella with a spoon because generally that's how I enjoy eating Nutella. <laughs> and well, first of all, Nutella is expensive. So back in the day when I made it, you know, I was just a college student and my diet consisted of 33 cent burritos and ramen noodles and maybe some peanut butter sandwiches, not even jelly, okay? Jelly was for the rich folk. I digress. I was mad about wasting my money and Nutella. <laughs> so I thought, well, you know what, a few years have passed, and by a few I mean like 15. So I'll try it again. All right, one and a half cups all measured out for us here. You better believe I'm gonna take a spoon and lick every ounce of that out. <laughs> Plus the knife, this is my treat. That's for doing all the chores around the house. Okay, next up, two eggs. We double crack them. Boom! I think it's been proven. If you crack an egg with one hand, it just tastes better that way. Oh, and this was a tip on the website. Add half a teaspoon of baking soda. I don't have half a teaspoon measuring, so I'm just gonna eyeball that. But first you need half a cup of flour. Oh, I should have mixed the eggs in. Oh well. Too late. Mix it all in together, because that's how we do over here. We mess up and we just say, eh, it'll be good enough. Gosh, oh, by the way, the jar's almost empty. <laughs> Some would call this half full, but a Nutella lover would call it half empty. I actually saw a lot of Nutella recipes on Pinterest, and I mean, it ranged from like ooey gooey Nutella, and I almost made one, but then it involved a saucepan, and I just wasn't ready for that. And plus, if these are a hit, my kids could whip these up without really any of my help, you know, because they're so simple. Are these like normal brownies where you don't want to over mix? Please, Lord, make these be delicious. It's a pretty thick batter. Do you see this? Should I test the batter? Like, should I taste test the batter? I know it has eggs, guys. Salmonella, I dare you. Okay, the batter's not great. I mean, it's good in the sense of it tastes like Nutella, but it's no Ghirardelli. <laughs> We're gonna grease our pan, eight by eight pan. I don't know what size this is, but it's good enough. Also, did you notice that we did not have to add any sugar to this? Let that be a testament to tell you how much sugar is in Nutella, you guys. <laughs> so much sugar. You know what, that's what makes it so good. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it out and the recipe says, oh crap, where'd I put it? Uh -uh. Where is it? Oh my, I just had it, where is it? Found it. Oh great, I didn't even write down. 350 until they're done, okay? <laughs> Actually, the, re the website that I got this recipe off of was making me angry, so I will not link it, but I will link something better. How about that? Oh my word, these brownies are just giving me a run for my money. Okay, so I don't know if it's because my pan is like not eight by eight, but it took forever for these to cook, at least 40 minutes, which is like forever. I mean, in the world of brownies, not really. But the middle, I th still think, ugh, good. I bet you it's still ooey gooey. But there's also a reason there's a term called ooey gooey goodness. I mean, it comes out clean, but 
it just you know what I mean like the sides look so nice and cakey and then the middle is like ugh, like sad you know all we can do is hope that they taste good oh, oh that's another thing I wanted to say they smell really good oh it smells so good moment of truth here before all the kids stampede in here and realize the brownies are done it's kind of like a Dutch uh, pancake when you see like the sides go up but the middle I mean it's totally cooked Oh my God, it's warm and I cannot wait to dive in. I'm currently chewing. It is delicious. The verdict is in. <laughs> so it has that deep, rich flavor of Nutella. Oh my gosh, the hazelnuts, you guys. But it's also like just a lovely texture of brownie as well. Obviously I ate like the middle piece and not the hard cracky ends, which is probably my least favorite part, but oh i kind of wish i hadn't tried these because they are good so there's my disclaimer you guys don't make them okay just don't do it <laughs> bye -byes. i'm continuing to eat but i also have to share with you as i eat i'm thinking it's such a rich sophisticated flavor <laughs> <laughs> Clearly I don't get out much, but it's also subtle. It's not like smack you in the face Nutella. I think if I told someone that, or if I asked someone, hey, what kind of brownies are these? They might not think Nutella right away, but you can definitely taste the hazelnut in it. Oh my, it's fantastic. Fan, just hands down. I gotta get my hands off of it. I'm just gonna keep eating. I'm a barbarian, I'm eating with my hands. It's a nice rainy day here in Florida. Here's the proof. Can you see the rain or just my dying succulents? <laughs> On the menu for this evening, actually, you know what? I've made the executive decision to get these carrots out. So you go ahead, you can eat those carrots, okay bud? We are making ham and beans. Oh, and I wish I would have gotten a video of me dumping the beans. I thought it would be so boring, unimpressive. Little do I know. Actually, now they're like foaming. Is this, is this okay? I don't know if the foaming is natural, but I do have to tell you, these beans grew about 20% larger than their normal size. Look at these things. So I've let them soak for, well, longer than a day, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> I've put off making this recipe about, I don't know, when did I buy these beans, 17 months ago? So today's the day, and really I thought two days ago would be the day because that, uh, whatever. I just, I finally soaked the beans. We have some ham, chili powder, onion, and garlic. We're keeping it basic. Oh, you also need a can of diced tomatoes. Guess who doesn't have that? This girl. So we're just rolling with it. it smells like beans. Okay, so I have this really nice ham. It's from Costco, and I'm just gonna dice it up. Ooh, my knives. So the recipe says that you need one pound of ham. I don't know how much is in here. Ooh, this is four pounds. So is this a pound? I just feel like we need more than that. Those beans, you know what I mean? There's a ton of beans there. Let's do one more sliver. Like how I call that a sliver. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Kim, put a towel under your cutting board. Okay, mom. Okay, so I actually forgot the recipe. I mean, I wrote it down. Those just smell weird. They don't smell like canned beans, you know? Throw all the ham in there. Now that I'm looking at this, it's a lot of ham, it's a lot. So I'm not gonna add it all. I'll keep some diced up for breakfast or something. Okay, and then some onions. It says one diced onion. I just, just a few handfuls, you know? A few huge man hand handfuls. I like onions, so you know what? Let's just add the rest of it, why not? That's how I do things in my kitchen. Recipe, what? Was there a recipe we're following? <laughs> I should make my own cookbook. It would be like the most confusing cookbook. Use an onion, but you know what? If you don't have onions, just throw in a tomato or something. Two cloves of garlic and that looks good. And then we're gonna add eight cups of water. I feel like I should be adding chicken stock or something. Like wouldn't that add it so much more flavor? Hold on. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add four cups water and then four cups of the chicken stock that I have. Just because why not? And what do we do now? We let this cook on high pressure for 20 minutes. So I was looking for something to serve this with and I thought cornbread would be a great option. <laughs> this is what I found in my pantry instead. I'm not sure it's still good, 
But is this what they mean when they talk about shelf cooking? Ooh! It only expired a very few short days ago. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and make it. Don't let the 20 minute time limit fool you because it took uh, 45 minutes for this thing to come to pressure. So I've been letting it sit, mostly because I've been distracted doing a million other things. Now I'm gonna let it vent. Oh my gosh, it took forever for this thing to <laughs> vent. Speaking of forever, we're gonna have beans and ham to eat forever. Ooh, it smells nice. All right, and we haven't even added seasonings. I did open a jar of tomato paste because I figured, I don't know, it asks for a tomato, so like, you know, the can of tomato, and this is when you're supposed to add it. Should I just add some tomato paste? Am I gonna ruin the flavor? You know what, let's just leave it. <laughs> we're experimenting together, let's leave it out. And if it doesn't taste good, I'll add it. Okay, a quarter cup of lemon juice right in there. The seasoning packet from the beans, and I feel like that's what's gonna make it taste so good. I have no idea what kind of, ugh, what is that? What kind of seasoning? Onion powder? I don't know, I don't know what this thing is. What's in here? Maybe a thickening agent? What is that? Ugh, smoky? Sm I don't know what that is. And it doesn't say anything. Oh wait, it does say something on the package. Follow us. Well, I'm not gonna do that. You are to add a little bit of chili seasoning. I don't remember how much, teaspoon or something. Yeah, one teaspoon, that's plenty. Just so much beans. This is a really economical meal. Like look how much this makes. And the package of beans is like, what, a dollar, two dollars? I will say the ham looks a little sad. You see the ham in there? Looks like it shriveled up a bit, but those beans look good. Oh, it's so hot! Okay, let's get a little taste test. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna add this just for fun. You know what, I really think it would benefit from some carrots and celery and stuff like that. Okay, so I, well, I guess this is the dish, huh? Boon appetit, you creeps. Okay, let's try, let's try again. Maybe it's a little better. Well, let me tell you something. I'm excited for dessert. <laughs> Maybe a little Italian seasoning wouldn't hurt anything. Oh yeah, that smells good. <laughs> now it's Kim's kitchen. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's taste it now. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> it's better. Mmm, fresh out of the oven. It definitely doesn't look expired. Once you cook it, ooh. Look at those layers, the bubbling layers. Here, Meredith down there, she's excited to eat it too. Well, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me while I shared with you these delicious dinners. Another amazing week of meals. As always, I will try to link all of the recipes that I found down below with you, other than the bourbon chicken, because it's like my recipe, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day, and I will see you next time. Boon appetit, you creeps.